This is our third session on Ephesians 4, 17 to 24, where Paul is picking up on the point of 4, 1, where he said, walk worthily of the gospel, and now he's putting it in a negative form. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do. And that walk is picked up here again in practice, all uncleanness, and everything in between is a description of what's underneath the walking of the Gentiles and the practicing of the Gentiles that we are no longer to be a part of. So let's read it, and you'll see all the pieces, and the goal of this session is how do all these pieces fit together logically? That is, how do they fit together as cause and effect, or as result and cause? You'll see what I mean as we go. Now this I say, and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do. One, in the futility of their mind. Two, being darkened in their understanding. Three, and being alienated from the life of God. Four, because of the ignorance that is in them. Five, because of their hardness of heart. Six, they have become callous, which is virtually the same as hardness, we'll see. Seven, having given themselves up to sensuality, and now eight, and unto the practice of all uncleanness in covetousness. Oh, Father, this is a horrible description of what we were all like before Christ came to us. Even when we were little children, if we were saved as children, this is what was in our heart. This is what we would have become had you not taken hold of us. And so, God, grant us to understand where the walk of darkness, the walk of futility comes from so that we can be strongly motivated to walk away from this kind of life and into the life that is worthy of our calling. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So here's what I do, and I'm going to commend it to you. When I run into a list like this, some of which are very explicitly connected logically. So there's a because, right? And there's a because. So some of these are explicit, others are not. So I'm going to walk through it with you and ask you what you would put where it's not explicit. What kind of connector, what kind of logical connector would you put between these pieces? So walk no longer as the Gentiles. And I would say, well, because you don't want to be walking in a way that's futile. So this is this in here is not just a statement of what's underneath that walk, but what it is about that mind that produces that walk. So the because gets at the producing. This futility of mind produces that kind of walk. That's my point of putting something like a because there. Futility of mind being darkened in their understanding. Now, this doesn't say in order that they're darkened, or because they're darkened, or therefore they're darkened. It just says being, and we have to supply whether it's some kind of logical connection or not. And again, I'm going to say, I'm going to suggest a because. They have futile, their mind is futile. It doesn't do what it's supposed to do and ends in a dead end because they are darkened in their understanding. So the mind and the understanding are virtually the same. The understanding is what the mind does, and this darkness that is in the understanding produces this futility of the use of the mind. And then you get to this next participle, which doesn't have any logical connector explicit, like like these. Alienated from the life of God. Now, this one's a little more difficult, but I'm going to stay with 
what seems to me he's doing all the way down. It seems to me because of these two explicit becauses and the logical uh, obviousness of others that he means for us to trace these down, down, down to the bottom cause. So I'm going to put because here again. Because. So avoid the walk of the Gentiles because it comes from a feudal mind. That feudal mind comes because there's a darkness in the understanding. That darkness is owing to the fact that the life of God is totally missing. That's the point of the darkness. When God is not in the mind, when God is not taken into account in the mind, what's left is darkness. And the reason they are alienated from the life of God is because, now this one's explicit, of the ignorance that is in. They don't know God. They don't know God. You can't have a union with the life of God and the light of God in your mind if you don't know God. They are ignorant of God. They don't know him. Why don't they know him? You might think, well, that's the bottom. Ignorance is the bottom problem of the human heart. No, it's not. The bottom problem is because of their hardness of heart. And isn't it interesting that heart, hard heart, produces empty mind. So beneath ignorance, in everybody that you talk to who's an unbeliever, beneath ignorance is another deeper problem, namely a moral problem of hardness, rebellion. Having become callous, now I'm arguing that this callous and this hardness are the same. And he's just picking up now, and he's going to state two results. Not long, no longer because, but because they become callous, they have given themselves up. So, so that, you could say. With the result that, they have given themselves up to sensuality. The result of a callous heart is not only ignorance, but sensuality. And that sensuality, again, with the result that practice all kinds of covetousness. Now, to make that clear, here's what I do. I write out the text, and I try to put those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pieces of the text in the order of their causality from the bottom being the deepest cause to the top being the final result. And everything in the middle is ordered by whether it's a cause of what comes just before it. And then I indent it to show that it's a support. It's a support for what goes above it. So let me, here's where our text starts in verse 17, futility of the mind. But I'm going to um, try to show, by putting it all together, how the totality of the text flows. They practice, we get that from verse 19 at the end, or they walk, verse 17, they practice all uncleanness in covetousness because they have given themselves up to sensuality. Practice uncleanness rooted in handing yourself over to sensuality. The sensuality is rooted in the futility of the mind. The futility of the mind is rooted in the darkness of the understanding. Our minds are futile. They don't achieve what they should because our minds are filled with darkness. That darkness is owing to our alienation from the life of God. When God and his light-giving life are missing from the mind, all we have is darkness resulting in futility, resulting in sensuality, resulting in practices that are unclean. Beneath that alienation is ignorance, and beneath that ignorance is hardness of heart, or call it callousness. You notice those are on the same indention because they are repetitions. This is not a cause of this. This is repeats it. So here's where we are. 
This is a profound insight. Think about it a long time. The deepest problem of humanity is not ignorance. The deepest problem is a hardness against the knowledge of God that produces darkness, futility, sensuality, and practices. And what do we need to happen, therefore? What we need is what we saw back in 2, 4, and 5. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead, that's callous hardness. We were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. That's what has to happen here. Life of God has to stream in. We have to have the light and knowledge of the gospel. And through that, the life of God comes to us. That life removes all this darkness. That darkness restores our mind and the spirit of the mind so that it's not futile anymore and we're set free from bondage to sensuality and therefore we don't walk like the Gentiles do anymore.